let's see how the vocal feels now volume wise because a lot of guitars are coming in and picking up Okay, so right here in this this breakdown, we kind of need something to happen. I don't know what, but let's see. Oh, oh, oh. Daydreams, sharing up all feelings. Wonder if you're free. I think the electric piano is a little loud there. And the pad might be a hair loud. But what I'd like to do is. I think what has to happen is I think those loops have to have some kind of uh, filter on them. I'll show you a little trick commonly used. All right, so I'm gonna grab the DSP filter bank two. It's gonna be bypassed. I'm gonna automate that. So when this section comes up, I'm going to turn it on. That'll be step one. Okay, and I'm going to roll some things. Help me to memories. Okay, so so this this particular Manny delay is not enabled to be bypassed. And when I do this, I can. Click on any particular, you know how I can make them uh, automation enabled rather than going to all these menus, is if you hold down Control, Option, Command, click on it, and that little dialog box will come up. And it added it to the list. So we're going to take this one and shut it off. Okay, that's that's much cleaner so let's go back to that breakdown and there was one other thing i thought about doing which is really small that that may make the loops feel different there about me too Memories like a movie. Oh. so i'm going to try this even tied instant flanger i'm going to have it off the whole time the loops are playing and I'm going to enable it for this breakdown. Cool, so that, that helped, but now it's not loud enough. So I'm gonna turn it up here, which isn't affecting the overall level because the output of that plugin will only affect it when the plugin's on and it's bypassed through the rest of the tune. Check it out. We've been working on the vocals by working on everything around them. So that's the thing to keep in mind when you're when you're working on a session and you're mixing, you'll just keep going around and around and, and finalizing and finalizing little bits. Okay, let's let's check out the bridge now. I'm gonna loop play the bridge. There's a little comping guitar, and there's the picking guitar, and then there's a crunchy guitar. Now that the vocals are louder and all these effects came in, I'm feeling like all the nuance of those are gone. And then the cymbals bashing in the overheads against the vocals is a little bit annoying and interfering with it. So I'm gonna go dig in there and work on that now. So this is all contributing to the vocal, obviously. 
So this guy right here that I'm going to raise. So I'm not concerned too much with that whole part except the, that answer lick in between because that's something in between a vocal. So let's find that against the vocal. All of these moments, not even one. So I'm gonna play that again from there. I want it to blend in with the rhythm section in terms of like the way the drums and the loops are. So it's sort of part of it, and then it stands out for that lick. Time, cannot erase all of these moments. So a couple of points for you guys. You'll see me pushing a button down here. That's like a dim. So it'll knock down the volume 15 dB or something. So when I hear something quiet, if one part's sticking out when I'm playing it quiet, I know it's too loud. Also, if it's not exciting, quiet, I know I have to do more work, even though I'm not listening that loud. Then back here, I have my trusty, my Sony boom box. It has a line input. So occasionally I'll switch to that and go back there to check out some of these small particular details like this. All right, so I think this guitar is almost there. I think it's a little loud, but uh, I'm gonna listen to that while I go up and change those cymbals because they're, they're taking my head off. So let me grab the cymbals. So overheads are our cymbals. And I'm gonna lower it. Let's try there too. So if you notice what happened there, I just turned down the overheads and I'm like, gee, it's not going down much. And then I shut them on and off and I noticed it wasn't changing that much. And then I turned off the room mics and they were picking up a ton of, of cymbals. Let's listen to it just turned down and if it's a problem, I'll automate the high end down on the room mics. I think that's closer. We're gonna work on it a little more. One other thing you might've noticed if, if I flipped on one of the edits to this camera angle. Sometimes I'll just push back and I sort of am just hanging out listening with my eyes closed. I guarantee if, if you're working on a mix and you add it for a while and you're hunched over with your head in the computer, if you move away, move back from the speakers, console, controller, whatever you have, keyboard, and just forget about that stuff and just take a listen to see how it feels to you at that time i think that'll really help you get a different perspective all right let's loop that go back to that loop bridge So that's a pretty powerful guitar part. So I think we should we should bring that up.
Okay, there's a couple of things I want to do to that. I, I do feel like it needs to be kind of slightly leveled out. I'm going to put a LA3A to see what it does. Gotta love that. One of my first sessions I ever did, I was playing guitar, and I remember when they hit stop, this is real to real days, and the echo kept going. I was like, that was hooked, that was it. Anyway, back to this. I felt like this gives it a lot of control without robbing it of its weight and its tone. LA3A is easy. The attack and release time are medium. They're internally preset. It was like that on the hardware box. Gain reduction to the right, amount of gain reduction. Gain is how the gain controls the threshold so the more gain you put in the more gain reduction you get out so it's a little dance you have to do with both of them i very rarely have the gain reduction up here at, at seven but for some reason right now it's working so we're good with that so i do want to do one more thing to that i want to automate the power guitar down uh but do 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 when that lick comes in i feel like the crunchy guitar really should have just been sustaining so here's a, a little pro tools trick if if you highlight, this is the, the guitar lick in question, right? So if we do that and then we just highlight down here by holding shift, I can just pull this guy right down and see what it does. That's grooving for me with the vocal. Okay, so in that in that breakdown, I think we kind of need something to be have, have a little ambience on it. So I'm gonna mess with this. Let's see what we have. The treated piano. Let's just take a listen to that. Automate the the mix blend of the delay on the treated piano to go up in this part. Okay, I'm liking that. So let's loop this chorus and work on this a little bit. There is a nice, um, that grungy guitar we didn't address here. other guitar parts. So let's see how this guitar fits in the scheme of things. We didn't really address it.
still trying to find the most comfortable spot where we have the impact and the power and we don't lose it. And, uh, well, I loved you right then And I always will And surrender Well, I loved you right then And I always will I remember Recall the nights we spent up on the roof I always will So what I'm trying to do now is bring out, it's a great vocal performance, very emotional. I'm trying to now to bring that out more by adding some depth and dimension in certain areas, turning down the reverb, turning up the reverb. And now I'm doing different delays at different tempos in different spots. And then on a couple of key lines, I'm throwing a quarter note delay in. So what I noticed with that quarter note delay, I'm gonna send it into a little more of the vocal reverb and I also feel like I have to take off some more high end on it. So we'll do a little bit there and we're gonna do a little more here. That's nice. That sets it back a little. I'm gonna do a similar thing to the. Me, back to you. I remember. I remember. I remember. I remember. So I'm trying to grab the title every time of the song, and give it a little something. So I know that was the vocals part two, and there was a lot of work done on the instruments. But what's happening is, is I got to go in stages and I have to work around sections of the song from a musical standpoint. So what we did here was we made the vocal sound better by first using some outboard processing gear. Then I had to readjust the levels for that. And then I rethought some of the effects. And then as we went from section to section, we discovered things in the instruments that were interfering. So once we discovered what they were, we had to clear them out change the stereo field, then a creative decision may happen or a creative thought may come and you have to go and strike while the iron's hot and take care of it. So right now, the vocals are 90% there, but that last 10%, I wouldn't even can be concerned with yet because we have to bring in the background vocals. So once we get the background vocals and the harmonies in, then we can really delve in and totally fine tune the lead. And I'm sure we'll go back and work on more automation and different, different things to the band, the arrangement, just to help the vocals. So I hope you enjoyed it. That was Vocals Part 2, song number three, Anatomy of a Mix. Stay tuned. We'll get to background vocals in the next one. Thank you. <laughs>